A.B. Stoddard with us, associate editor and columnist at Real Clear Politics. Let's, let's deal first with the tapes. It's, there cannot be a coincidence that it's coming out now, but I still can't figure out who it would be coming from. And McCarthy's people can't either. Right. Well, Leland, it's important to note that the tapes are not coming from the January 6th committee. They're coming from two authors of an, um, a book that's coming right, out next for week. Sure. Uh, and who write for the New York Times, right? So um, they're coming out now because the book's coming out now. It's not helpful to Kevin McCarthy, um, but he seems to be in a pretty, on, on pretty stable footing uh, with his rank and file nonetheless. Um, you've been around Washington enough, long enough to know that the time to get Kevin McCarthy is not now. It's a few days after the election when he has to run his leadership race for speaker should the Republicans succeed uh, in taking over. The people on those phone calls are not just members. There are leadership staff there as well. And what's unfortunate for Kevin McCarthy is he's not very smart. Years ago, he lost a speakership because a chance at the speakership because he said that Republicans had uh, engaged in a lengthy investigation into the Benghazi episode and weakened Hillary Clinton's approval numbers uh, in doing so, and that they had basically rendered her, you know, un uh, considered untrustable by the electorate and and in poor standing with the voters before 2016. He lost his chance at leadership. Now, in this incredible moment, um, in the days following January 6th, Kevin McCarthy did not imagine he would be, um, he would be taped. Um, these, these are, th th this is damaging because people yeah. think that there are more tapes coming, and he wasn't yeah. smart to consider that people might be recording him. Yeah, and, and you, you make a good point. That there's a lot of people on, on this, on these calls. It can be, it can be members, it can be people who also want the speakership freedom caucus you can think of matt gates madison cawthorn who've got their own problems right now you think of the, all the way on the other side liz cheney um what i would to me the reaction the media reaction is pretty incredible you've got joy reed from msnbc uh and you've got tucker carlson who almost sound alike uh, we heard obviously from joy now let's hear from tucker Conservatives get their act together right away. Kevin McCarthy, or one of his highly liberal allies, like Elise Stefanik, is very likely to be Speaker of the House in January. That would mean we will have a Republican Congress led by a puppet of the Democratic Party. Who's more powerful in the Republican Party right now, Donald Trump, who gives McCarthy a pass, or Tucker Carlson, who calls him a puppet of the Democrats? You know, you make a good point, Leland, because um, the fact that he was able to call around after the media reports and tell his rank and file, uh, listen, President Trump is cool with this. It's all fine. He knows how powerful he is. We all hung together to support him. Uh, this this is going to blow over. Um, it, it, it leaves him nowhere if Tucker Carlson is telling um, the media ecosystem on the right that he's unacceptable as leader. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the fact is, um, Elise Stefanik uh, is potentially, which is interesting, potentially uh, would be sort of the next in line. You can imagine that if Trump turned on McCarthy in the days following the election, he might get the Freedom Caucus behind Elise Stefanik because she's a woman. Um, and uh, the idea that, that uh, Tucker is actually criticized both of them is very unhelpful to the Republican leadership in the House. But McCarthy, to circle back to my point, he can't rest. Uh, he uh -huh. can't actually believe that he's in good standing until he's he's come around to the other side of Election Day. He's secured enough seats to make the case he deserves to be Speaker, and he survives that vote on the floor. Yeah, and he seems so sort of terrified of, of doing anything to in jeopardize that, that he's a little bit paralyzed as you, as you watch him. Um, like somebody with, you know, the Fabergé egg that he doesn't want to want to drop, which sometimes ends poorly. There's a, a big point that you made in terms of the, the test of Donald Trump and his influence. Uh, Trump's upcoming midterm test, Ohio, May 3rd, J.D. Vance, Pennsylvania, May 17th, Dr. Oz, Georgia, May 24th, he endorsed David uh, Perdue for governor uh, in a primary race. Um, Ohio GP, GOP Senate primary nominee preference, uh, March 2022 to now, J.D. Vance uh, up by 12 points, uh, Gibbons down by nine. The only thing that changed in that time was a Trump endorsement. Are we to believe that President Trump's coattails 
are, are once again pretty powerful? Leland, I will be so curious to see where they are powerful and where they are not. The rap on Trump um, turning against people who thought they were going to be supported by him, who had hired his former aides, who encouraged them and made them feel that they might get his endorsement and are now um, feeling burned. Um, the rap from, from, from them is that Trump is being ill-advised to follow. He's misguided and he follows celebrities and, and just wants uh, to, to, be, to back J.D. Vance because he wrote a famous book and he has more name recognition and Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania because um, he's a TV celebrity. There, there is a case to be made, um, and, and, and Josh Mandel's campaign is making it in brutal ads that, you know, Trump made the wrong decision. And they're trying to go after the same members of the Republican primary electorate with that argument that Trump's been misled, but the real, you know, America first MAGA candidate is Josh Mandel. Uh, it's interesting polling for Vance. I, I'm not going to, to make any predictions, and, and I'll be interested to see the result on election night. If it does bad go badly for J.D. Vance. Um, it's uh, it's really likely to uh, fuel um, the opposition in the, in the Senate primary in, in Pennsylvania yeah. to Oz, um, who conservatives are making the case um, is just a flash in the pan and is not conservative enough. The, it, the final one that you mentioned in Georgia on May 24th is going to be a humiliation for President Trump because the sitting governor is likely to prevail. He's ahead by 20 points in yeah. some polls over the person that Trump begged to take him on because, of course, he is his number one enemy, Brian Kemp. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be May is going to be a very telling month about the sway that Donald Trump still has in the party. Yeah, and as you know as well, the, the, the more you win, the more you win in politics just because of the, the momentum. AB, it was great to see you. Thanks again. Thanks, Leland. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.